Was the speech? Yeah, the speech was he's talking about this this Chinese farmer. And uh, the Chinese farmer and his son, they're picking radishes about the ground. And they don't own the land that they're farming off of. And uh, they're barely subsisting. They're giving 70% to the landowner. They're living off of 30% of these radishes. Their whole financial legacy is tied up into this workhorse. And one day, and the son is really working the land because the man is too old. And one day the workhorse runs up off the hill. He, he just fucks off. He's up the hill. And the son runs into the house and he shakes his dad up and he says, Dad, you're not gonna believe this is a, this is a travesty. We're gonna die out here. Uh, I can't get these radishes to grow unless I turn this land over and I can't move that hoe without the horse and the horse is gone. This is a nightmare. And the old man, nonplussed, looks at his son. He goes, I don't know what this is, son. I don't know if it is a nightmare. I can't call it. And the son thinks his dad's out to lunch or like ambivalent or something's wrong or he's too old. And a couple days later, the kid is chilling on the porch and he sees the horse running down the hill with 50 wild stallions behind him. And they run into the paddock and he locks the paddock and he runs inside and he hits the daddy. He's like, man, this is, fuck radishes. Like, we're rich, you know, we're, we're in the horse business. We're in the horse trading business now. This is a miracle, dad. I'm gonna go tell everybody we're trading horses now. And the father looks at his son nonplussed again and says, I don't know what this is. I don't know if it's a miracle, I can't call it. And a couple more days pass and the son's trying to break these horses down, domesticate these horses. He didn't know anything about horses, he's a radish farmer. So uh, one of the horses ain't having it. He rears up, kicks him in his leg. It's like 1400s China. There's no Kaiser Permanente. His shit is shattered. They wrap him in some like tobacco leaves and some sprinkle some mint on it. Go sit in the chair for a while. And, uh, and he's wailing and the townspeople hear about it. And the townspeople run up on the little shack and, oh man, what are you gonna do? You know, you can't domesticate these horses. You can't move this hoe. You guys are fully fucked. I don't know what you're gonna do, but this is, this is pretty much the end, right? Like this is a nightmare. And the old man says, I don't know what this is. He looks at his son's leg. He goes, I don't know what this is. I can't, I can't really call it. Uh, a couple more days pass. He's sitting with his son. He's trying to calm him down. He's in the middle of pain. And they hear this thunderous noise. And they look up on the ridge line. And they see 5,000 samurai on horseback running towards their little hut. And the commanding officer gets off his horse and says, give us your son. We're going to fight the Maoist army. And he looks at his son's leg. And he looks back at the samurai army. And he goes, I would, but he can't get out the chair. He, he can't get on his, he can't, no, I can't, I would, but I can't, he's crippled, and the man gets back on his horse, and 8,000 men ride off to their death, and I listen to this tape, and, and I, I, driving back from the beach, back to where I'm living, and I get out of my car, and her bags are packed, she's on her way out, and old me, would have written a haiku poem in blood and ripped my shirt off Hulk Hogan style and ran down the street and jumped over the fence and th that guy, the climb the hair up the boom thing. Boombox in yeah, the air. Yeah, boombox in the air guy. That's what I came up on. And something in me from having heard what I just heard, what feels like this is, this is now I can't get no lower. I hear this like I can't call it. And this, it becomes like this, the most diplomatic breakup I ever had in my life. And I say, what can I do? And, she, and uh, can I get you a car? And she goes, no, don't worry about it. Go get well.